Well, thank you, first of all, Justin O'Connor and Danny O'Connor for reaching out to us. I'm Coach Jim Stroker. I've had the luxury of meeting and being with so many of you in the past five years. And I have with me two of my closest friends and two people who have both spoken at Native Nation event conferences, Jocelyn Sokol up here in the black and the great Maria Salvatore down below. But first of all, you know, we just want to reach out from Native Nation and send our empathy and our love to everyone. We know that so, so many people are going through horrific times. Um, this has been a pandemic like surreal. And we know that the pain and suffering is globally. And we just want to reach out to say that we're here for you, that we're thinking about you, and we love you. Jocelyn? Yeah, I mean, um, we're hoping to, to give some inspiration to everyone going through really unprecedented times, um, you know, issues that people have had being magnified if, if anyone is experiencing, you know, anxiety in their life or depression in their life um, or, you know, loneliness or it's, it's just magnifying during this time. Um, and also to, to hopefully inspire people and motivate people that even though we are sort of in this pause in life, there are many things that they can be doing to, and you can be doing in, in the community we're talking to right now, uh, to, to really help yourselves and, and bring forth the feeling that you really want to have in your life and set that intention. Great. Maria? Yeah, definitely. We just want to come on and show up and just express our compassion, our empathy, and uh, there's a lot of fear going on in the world. There is a lot of suffering in, in for frontline workers, as well as people who don't have jobs, as well as children, as well. I mean, there's nobody not affected by this. So the goal is to offer tools towards um, reaching, pivoting, so that you can sustain and manage through this really, really tricky time. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one thing that I've found is with social distancing and such isolation, we need connections. And one of the greatest gifts of this challenge we're going through are all suddenly the virtual connections that are going on. So all three of us are coaches and we work with clients right now going through difficult things and trying to give them the hope and inspiration they need to carry on. So it's very, very tricky, but What's happened, I think, more than anything, is that people have found that this world of virtual coaching and teaching is one that can really be useful. Jocelyn, how do you use it in your practice? Yeah, um, it's, it has been remarkable, you know, at, at first feeling like, oh my gosh, how am I going to continue working and helping people um, when, you know, I, I connect with them so much um, in, in person. Um, but as a, as a coach, I, there's plenty of people that I've coached that I've never met, um, that I've already, you know, just been using Skype or zoom or even, you know, phone sessions with. So that aspect, I, you know, feel like the coaching profession has been lucky that that hasn't really had to miss a beat. And you really, it, it's, it's surprising how much energy you can get from someone, even seeing the two of you right now, you know, I can feel your, your warmth and your caring. Um, so it's been something that, that has been able to, to continue. Um, you know, I've been much busier with a lot of people going through things and a lot of people really needing some support right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Great. So Maria, you, you're, working virtually as well. I know you're an energy healer. I know you are a Reiki practitioner. I know that you teach meditation. I know you do yoga. I, I know that you are a life enrichment coach. I mean, you're doing all this virtually with people. What's that like? Yeah, just, just like what Jocelyn just explained, that has been a magnificent, extraordinary tool to keep us all connected, to keep us in the game. And, and to keep continuing to help people like we were doing 
prior to this. And I use movement, I use yoga, I use different types of exercises and different breathing techniques as well as meditation as well on just helping people manage and stay centered and, and realize where they're holding it in the, the body. Because a lot of times when we're in that moment of stress or fear or freak out, right, or grief, right, uh, there's this contraction that goes. So my, my, what has helped me so much, so much that I've decided to offer it <laughs> to people is just a way to move energy and release it out of your physical body. And, and it can be as gentle or as strenuous as the person wants. Yeah. It helps the immune system too. Right. So, so one of the things, you know, I've been talking about as a speaker is the power of gratitude. And, you know, I don't say it lightly. It's not a fluffy word. Gratitude is a proven research, proven tactic that you can use during tough times. But one of the keys is to do it all the time, not do it when you feel always perfect, but to find what's going on in your life that you're grateful for. So one of the things we do is work with clients and really we create streaks. You know, we, pray, we create a little competition, a little challenge. And right now I have two clients that are up to 63 days of three things a day in the gratitude world. The other thing that we do is work on optimism. And optimism is a learned skill that's the opposite of helplessness or hopelessness believing that you're going, that you that there is a finish line, that you can do it. And I don't know what game that you've ever been at or what situation you've ever been at. When you get behind in the game, when it's tough, you've got to believe. You have to send out to the world, send out into yourself that you can make it. So we work on optimism. I think it's a great tool. So one more little thing we just want to talk about. Jocelyn, I know that one of the things that you're really an expert at is helping people go back into their past lives, into areas that may have created some trauma that may now be coming back up again during this, during this challenge. So give us a little teaser on how you do that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think my past lives it, it might sound like, you know, if they've had many past lives, like where they've died and come back. Um, but I think you more meant in their past in this life. Yeah. Um, although that is something that, you know, is, is something to explore, but um, I don't personally explore that with people. Um, but I do explore, you know, what has happened in their past, you know, inner child work, which is really that, um, you know, many of us or most of us have experienced something at a young age. Um, and at the time, we didn't have the cognitive development to really understand it. So we have to sort of make some kind of reason for the fact that it occurred. Um, and that typically has us take a vow of I'm not good enough or I, you know, um, wh whatever negative self-talk is created at that time. Um, and so that's something that, that um, I look into with my clients, give them the space to really look within and explore what things have, have formed them and, um, and then start to really fact check and have them learn to put space between themselves and those, and those thoughts right. and those, um, you know, that fixed mindset that they've put on themselves. Right. So one of the things we're all being uh, shown is that there's a tremendous onset of uh, de depression, um, people being socially isolated, and the use of drugs and alcohol is way up. And that can be a big problem. Um, so one of the things, Maria, I know you specialize in, I, I've seen the work you've done in a volunteer way. I've seen you work with clients who are going through challenges, uh, with substance abuse and alcoholism. And I know for a fact, if you, I don't mean to put you in a corner that you yourself have challenged, been challenged by this, but overcame it, overcame it and used 
different tools to get yourself through it. What a gift you are to anyone who's going through a challenge. How do you do that? And talk, talk to us a little bit about that uh, work you do. So, yeah, that's one of my certification. One of my certifications is a trauma informed yoga teacher and I've studied, um, I'm recovering myself and that doesn't put me in a corner. I'm really happy to talk about it because I think that's, there's a lot of shame and stigma around it. So part of my work is like, hey, you know, and, and I, and there's a tremendous amount of people who are numbing out, who numb out, you know, and we can numb out in all different ways. And part of the practices I use is um, pause and feel because underneath, you know, this whole or pandemic is trauma, right? Like Jocelyn was saying there, I mean, nobody, everybody is experienced a level of trauma through this. And so there are breathing techniques. There are different types of breath work you can do to get almost the same effects as substances. And I was somebody who uh, had a real struggle with addiction, cocaine, alcohol, pills, and other, uh, you know, heavy substances. And I, I dealt with addiction for 20, 20 plus years, two decades, more than that, battled addiction. And, and the one thing about addiction, I think for me, it was like, I was the last to know because people would be like, just stop, you know, because it, when I was numbing out, I felt very safe. And like what Jocelyn was saying to um, that self lack of worth and that, that self-talk, it was just, I had this very um, broken model of thinking that was creating this inner outer war. And so alcohol and drugs were a tool. They just weren't a sustain, it just wasn't a sustainable tool for me. And so some of the breathing tools, some of the yoga, some of the movement, when you're in that state of, uh, right? Um, fear, freeze, fight. Um, yoga has been a really beautiful way that I have pivoted. Yeah. So I don't well, read substances as much just because it, it got so bad for me. It just was heightened my anxiety, my depression, suicide ideation, hospitalizations, and everybody suffered. Everybody in my family suffered right along with me because it's a very misunderstood disorder. All right. So I, I, I and I don't know if I'm right. I have no reason to believe this is true, but I think everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. I really do. And I hope that us uh, connecting with you right now happened for a reason. I hope that if you're in a dark place or if you just felt like, well, I wish coach would come along. Now you got three of them, three people who are here to help give you support and maybe some tools or tactics that you can use if you're not if you're really not in the place you want to be. So from Native Nation events, everyone there, we want to, we want to extend our, again, uh, tremendous love out to you. And as we said, we're here for you. If you feel like we can help you, please reach out to Native Nation. And we wish you love and strength. Jocelyn? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, this is a shared worldwide experience. And, um, you know, it has so much pain and so much despair, but there is that small gift that it is bringing us all to that realization yet again, um, that we all are, are one and all can be here to support each other. Absolutely. Maria? Yeah, I, um, we're all in this together and there are so many tools that can help people out there. There's so many ways that you don't have to just go through life suffering and struggling. There are, there's just so many tools out there. Great. Well, we love you guys. Thank you so much for being with us today and we hope we'll see you next week again. Have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you.